Hi, it's me, Waffles. In this video, I will be going over the configure structure feature file, which is the file that Minecraft Java Edition uses to determine what template pool to use when loading in structures, as well as which biomes the structure is allowed to load in. Using this, you can create any custom structure that you want. However, you also need a template pool file as well as a structure set file. And I don't go over those in this video, but I do have a link to videos for both of those in the description. So you'll see that I'm using the same data pack that I used in my template pool video. You will need to have this set up with data and then your namespace and then world gen. And you also have to have pack.mc meta. And if you don't know how to use pack.mc meta, there should be an I card up here. But anyways, you are going to need to at least have a template pool for a configured structure feature. If you don't know what template pools are, you're going to need to watch that video, which is again linked in an I card up here. So what I'm going to do now is inside of WorldGen, create a new folder called configured, oops, configured underscore structure underscore feature. And then inside of that, I'm going to create a new file. This is going to be called, I guess, just enchanting room again. So enchanting underscore room, then dot JSON. So in here, I'm going to need some curly brackets. And then I'm going to need to put in quotation marks config. This is going to need curly brackets as well. Then here, you're going to want to put start underscore pool. It'll be the template pool, but the structure loads when it generates. For that, you're going to need to put the namespace. So for me, that's WAB world gen. And then just the name of the template pool. So that's enchanting underscore room and so the next one is going to be size and i'm going to set this to seven this determines how big the structure is allowed to get and that has to do with jigsaw blocks which i have gone over in another video i'm not sure if that video is up to date so i might need to make a new one but i will have that linked right here and if i do end up making a new one then the new one will be linked if you just set it to one it will only generate the thing in the template pool if you set it to two it will generate the thing in the template pool plus any jigsaw blocks that are included in the template pool and if you set it to three it will generate the template pool and any jigsaw blocks in the temple pool and any jigsaw blocks in the structures loaded by those jigsaw blocks and then etc and seven is the max so you might as well keep it at seven even if you don't have any jigsaw blocks in the temple pool so after that is going to be biomes and i believe you can just put any of the existing biomes in the game so like minecraft uh forest but it is probably better to create a tag and again, sorry about so many iCard links, but I also have a video on how to create tags and stuff, and I will link that up here. I'm just going to make a tag really quick to get this to work. So what I've done is I've copied the default pillager outpost tag. I'm going to rename it to enchanting underscore room. And you'll notice that, of course, this has to be in data and then my namespace and then tags world gen biome has structure. And this is just going to determine all of the biomes that my thing can generate in so in order to actually make the structure generate in those biomes i have to put the tag that's going to be wab world gen and then has underscore structure because it's in that has structure folder inside of the biome folder and then enchanting underscore room and you'll see if you're using visual studio code with the data back helper plus extension that it underlines this which means that you have the name correct if you are using the extension and it does not underline then that probably means you have typed it wrong then after that you're going to want to put adapt underscore noise and all that adapt noise does is it tells the game whether to change the terrain around your structure just to make the structure fit in a little bit more so if you set this to true it will do things like create a little island under your structure if it is generated floating on water. And it also creates like a little bit of a hill if the structure is loaded, floating a bit above the ground in some places. So you can set this to false if you don't care about that. And then near in the end is spawn underscore overrides. If you don't want to change any spawning in your structure, just leave it like this. But you can also just open that up and anything that you put in here will override some of the spawns within the bounding box of your structure. So you can change the spawn overrides of any of the spawn categories. And these are the same categories that determine mob spawning in your biome. So if you know about those, you'll know what these do. But I'm just going to give a brief explanation first. So it can be monster, creature, ambient, axolotl, underground water creature, water creature, water ambient, or misc, meaning miscellaneous. 
And it's pretty obvious what most of these categories do. Ambient is for stuff like bats. Axolotls is for axolotls. Creature is for things like cows and sheep and pigs. Monster is for things like zombie skeletons and spiders. Underground water creature is for glow squids. Water ambient is for fish. And water creature is for dolphins and squids, I think. If you are curious about what any of these do, you can check Sliced Slime's vanilla World Gen Default Pack, which I have linked in the description. Just open any biome you want. So for example, uh, maybe I want to go to the plains. If I open that, you will see which mobs are in each of the categories. So basically, you're going to want to put whatever category you want to override. So for example, if you want all monster spawns to be replaced by a different monster, you're going to, of course, want to put monster. You're then going to have to choose the bounding box that it will replace spawns in that can be either full or piece and i am not exactly sure what this does because there is no information that i can find anywhere but i'm thinking full is just the full bounding box of the entire structure and piece maybe only replaces mob spawns in the original loaded structure so like it won't replace mob spawns in jigsaw blocks but again that is just a guess so i'm going to set it to full you're then going to need to put spawns, oops, spawns, then square brackets inside of there, some curly brackets. You're going to want to put type and then the name of the mob. So let's say I want only witches to spawn, then I will put that. I'm going to put the weight. This can be one because there's only one type of mob spawning, but if I, you know, copied and pasted multiple of these, then the one with the higher weight would of course be the one that is more likely to spawn. Then I'm going to put min count. So this is going to be one because I want a minimum of one witch to spawn. And max count, this is going to be three because I want a maximum of three witches to spawn. Then the very last thing that I need to do is go back to the end of this curly bracket right here, the second to last, and then I'm going to put type. As you can see, this can be a long list of things. All of this stuff will only work for villages, pillager outposts, or bastion remnants, because those are the only structure types that can actually load jigsaw blocks and structures from NVT files. So you're going to have to choose one of those. So, Minecraft Village and Minecraft Pillager underscore Outpost are exactly the same. They don't do anything different from each other. A load in Skylight, I like the highest block in the world. So that is good in most cases, except they can't generate underground, and they also cannot generate in the nether. They'll always generate on top of the roof. And the only other option is Bastion underscore Remnant. And that is what's going to allow you to generate below the nether roof or something because it always loads in at the Y coordinate 33. So that can allow you to choose the specific height at which your structure spawns. Because for example, if you do something like put a pillar of structure voids underneath your structure that is like 10 blocks tall, then the main part of the structure will generate at Y43. But again, there still isn't that much customization, and I'm hoping that more customization will come soon. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video, or if you have any suggestions for future videos, you can tell me in the comments, or you can join my Discord server that is linked in the description and talk to me about it there. I'd like to thank my patrons, Tata Turner and Sayori1. They are supporting me and the Waffles SMP, and I really appreciate that. If you want to do that too, I have my Patreon linked in the description. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.